Hi, sir. Hi, Amy. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very good. So, how are your tests going on? Uh, yeah, done all of them now. Chemistry, maths, and biology. Uh, it was chemistry, so that's the final one. I hope they went well. Um, we'll get our results in the coming week, I think. Okay, yeah. good. So, we can start a new topic today. So, I was thinking if we could do probability today. Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds great. Um, not really confident in that, if I have to say, like from past experience. So yeah, hope you would give me a different outlook to that because I just really don't like it. Sure, uh, there are a lot of uh, you know uncertainties when we talk about probability, and uh, mm -hmm. that is how the subject is. So let me give it a shot. Let's see um, if you really get it right. It's not right. very difficult, but I think it is a very interesting subject. So uh, let's talk about it. And mm -hmm. uh, feel free to, you know, stop me wherever you don't get the concept. So today we'll talk about probability in general, very basic okay. concept. And then later we'll build on that particular concept. Okay. Yeah. So let me share with you the lesson which I have prepared. So probability introduction. So we'll talk about overview of probability as you know, the probability basically is a branch of mathematics that predicts possibilities of events, right? And it also provides measure of likelihood of its occurrences. So that is what probability in short is. Today, we'll talk about uh, some basic definitions. We'll look into probabilities of events, complementary events, mutually exclusive or disjoint events. We'll talk about the addition rule, and then we'll get into some more complex, uh, you know, uh, scenarios, which includes inclusion and exclusion. Oh, okay. And then we'll talk about dependent versus independent events, and that will lead us to multiplication rule. And then the topic on independent events and conditional probabilities. That is kind of intricate. We might take this up in the next lesson. Mm -hmm. And with that, we'll club some exam practice questions. So I thought I'll break it into two parts. We'll keep it simple today. Once we learn all these concepts, then we can actually combine all these concepts and then talk about your exam review. Does that sound good? Yep. That's good. Okay. So to begin with, basic concept. So there are terms which we are going to use so many times. So I thought let's talk about these terms first. Yes. So probability is to predict the possibilities of events and provide measure of likelihood of its occurrence. That's how we defined it, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's look into each term. When you say most events cannot be predicted with certainty, right? So the whole subject is about possibility of predicting, right? Right. But what we have to remember is that most events cannot be predicted with certainty. So uh, likely we are predicting, right? So there are so many terms which we use. We're never exact here, right? So we estimate, we mm -hmm. predict, chances and likelihood are our key words in this particular unit on probability. So remember that part, correct? Okay. Then we also say that chances and likelihood are the key words while describing these events. Very important to understand, right? Don't overlook these words. There are chances it may occur. There's likelihood of its happening. Perfect? Mm -hmm. So probability of an event is measured as a ratio of favorable outcomes to total number of possible outcomes of that event. We'll also understand what is an event soon, right? With the help of a very simple example. The probability of an event is a number between zero and one, both included. So whenever you want to find probability of anything, it will be a number between zero and one. Mm -hmm. Where okay. zero indicates nearly impossible. Right? And one yeah. indicates almost certain. So I'm still not saying certain and impossible, correct? 
since mm -hmm. these are all the chances which we are taking and you know we could go wrong but that is how we predict with numbers so let's begin with a very simple example which is a concrete example with us so i'm calling it as an illustrative example a fair die is thrown once find the probability of obtaining a a 6 b a prime number c a 7 d a number greater than 4 and e is a 2 or a 3 okay mm -hmm. so this is uh, our event so what is really happening here is a fair die is being thrown once so when i throw a fair die what do you expect which numbers do you expect to come um 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 right so numbers between 1 to 6 right so these are yes. six numbers which you expect right any of them can come when we say a fair die fair die really means that the possibility of any one of them coming they are equally likely right so whether it will come one six they are equally likely that is what right. means when we say a fair die and as you said one to six are the numbers we call them as our outcomes so the outcomes of this throw is any number from one to six and since these are all the possible outcomes we will call this as a sample space so we have only these six possibilities to work with and we also give it a number number of possibilities in this experiment are only six correct so we have a number to associate with so we have that is a sample space we'll now put a number s capital s or even u sometimes universe right so it is universe uh, for us as far as this event is concerned now when we talk about an event then all these things which we are asking for a six out of those outcomes we take possible outcomes which we are looking into so we are looking into a probability of getting a six and six is one of the outcomes you, you get my right. right yeah so event when we define it is combination of your outcomes it could be just one it could be all of them it could be okay. none of them something like that is an event okay so that is what when you say event is a prime number right so out of those six numbers which we have we know that the prime numbers are two three and two, five and five yeah so these are the three which are we'll say favorable events out of a sample space of these six you get all these things now using straight. the terms yeah okay so these this is how we are going to define our terms so let's get back to this example and let's solve it really so here again i have the same question before you so a dice is thrown okay die or dice we generally say more than one is dice but uh, for singular also these days we are using the word dice right so dice oh, okay. dice dice can be used for singular single throw also okay now so as i was saying a dice is thrown so when i say a dice is thrown it may or may not be fair so that's be that should be clear in your mind so when i just say a dice is thrown then you know some dice may not be fair dice they may right. be higher numbers or lower numbers whatever may be, be biased yeah biased dice correct so we'll talk about those things also so but <clears throat> here, when you say a die is thrown and we are not qualifying it with a fair die not necessarily it is a fair die right so mm -hmm. that assume sometimes we assume it to be a fair but when you say a die is thrown then outcome for sure is any number between one to six that outcome is not going to change so in our sample space we have only these six numbers and we say number of all possible outcomes and when we associate a number since you know probability is a ratio of numbers correct mm -hmm. that a number in our answer so we say that n of s is six so number of favorable number of total outcomes are six and okay. a fair die is thrown when we say then clearly we mean that the chances of getting any of the outcomes is equally likely. So if there are six numbers, one out of six, any number, those are the chances, right? It could be any one of those six numbers, correct? That's what it means. Event A. Now these are all the events which we are trying to define. Do you see that? These are all the events. 
So event A, we're looking into the first event A, which is a six. So event A, favorable outcome is six, and number of favorable outcomes only is one for us, right? There's only yeah. number six in that. And for B, prime numbers, we are defining the event. So this is how you define an event. Event B is prime numbers. In that case, the favorable outcomes are two, three, and five, and number of favorable outcomes for the event B is three. Got it? Um, it has to be written like that. It has to be written like this. Okay. Very yeah. Now, probability of a six, you can say, or you can also write probability of A, since event A has been defined um, as getting a six. six. Yeah. So probability of A will be N of A divided by N of S, right? Favorable over total, which in this case is one out of six. And for probability of prime number, which is P of B, the second event which we define, is the number NB, over ns, which is three out of six, or you can reduce it to half. Mm -hmm. So the probability answers are given in fractions. Sometimes we'll also convert them to percent, right? So we can also convert them to percent and write this as 50%. We might, right? But fraction is preferred. Since you see one out of six, writing in, in person means rounding, right? Right. So, so we avoid, we write them in, most of the time in fractions. Mm -hmm. So you can take your time to answer the other questions. Now, can you tell me what is the probability of getting a seven? Zero right. out of six. Zero out of six means zero. So that is what we meant, right? So the mm -hmm. probability could be any number between zero to one, right? Both included, correct? So mm -hmm. if the number doesn't exist, right? It is not oh, in a sample case. It is impossible event and the probability is zero. So if I say any number between one and six, probability is going to be one, correct? So that is how we um, Yeah, yeah. So number okay. greater than four, there are only two numbers greater than four, correct? And Five and six, is yeah. Two out of six and two or a three, or means any one of them. So we again get the probability as two out of six, which is one third, correct? Mm -hmm. So that gives you a simple concept about probability. Now, based on what we have learned, let's look into the key terms and let's really define them as they are defined in most of the books. Okay. okay. Now, there are three things which I thought I will include is when we talk about probability, there are three kinds of probabilities which we talk about. One is empirical probability. It is based on direct observation or experiment. For example, in the previous example, which was our illustrated example of throwing a dice, mm -hmm. we said that the probability is equally likely, right? However, you could conduct an experiment, throw the dice, let's say 200, 500 times, you have to throw it large number of times, record yeah. the readings, and then you can say for this particular die, the probability of getting a six is one out of six, correct? After doing right. the experiment. Sometimes it may not be so, right? But mm -hmm. you can figure it out by doing the experiment itself, correct? Then we talk about theoretical probability. Now, most of the time, we'll be actually working on this theoretical probabilities. We'll assume that things are equally likely and all those things, correct? Unless and until some other conditions are given to us. Oh, okay. So whenever we'll, we'll not be most of the time performing an experiment to find, but most of the time we'll be doing theoretical probabilities. Then we also have subjective probability, which is based on informed guesswork, intuition, or previous ex experience, right? Where many times, you know, we just can't do an experiment, but we have to like guess it out right, from our experience. So that is subjective probability. So these three terms are also commonly used in any uh, question based on probability. Now, as I said, empirical probability is based on experiment. Let's also define what a probability experiment is. Probability experiment is a well-defined process with number of trials in which observable output or results can be recorded. This is very important. So if I say a probability experiment, it means the experiment is very well-defined. It can be repeated n number of times. and Truly speaking, you cannot conclude anything till you repeat it many, many times. And those 
times which you repeat are called the trials. Whenever you do a trial, there will be an outcome and that outcome should be recorded so that we can conclude some results out of it, right? So that's mm -hmm. what it really means, right? We talked about sample space, which is denoted by letter capital S. It is the set of all possible outcomes in a probability experiment, right? So whenever you do an experiment, you know this could be possible. Everything which could be possible is included as a sample space. In theoretical probability, we assume whatever are possible things, we assume them to be as a possible outcome, and we call that as the sample space. Trial. Now, trial is repetition of the experiment in which outcome is produced and tallied. That means you make a chart and you record it. What has mm -hmm. outcomes? Measurable results of the experiment. For example, in our dice, the measurable work numbers one to six. If I take two dice and throw them, then we have combinations of one and six from each. So we have 36 combinations, correct? So when you throw- Oh, them, six times, yeah. So we have 36 combinations and those are the numbers with those two dice, right? If I take a deck of cards, for example, there are 52 cards in a deck, mm -hmm. in a standard deck of cards. So, so the outcomes could be any of those 52 cards, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is what we mean. So the sample points is each individual outcome or the element in the space. So those are the different points. We also call them as elements. N of S is the number of elements in the sample space. So in our dice, if there is one die, then the number of elements are six. If there are two, experiment is, is being performed. 36 will be the number in a sample space. Event A. Event has to be given a name. Normally, a capital letter is chosen as a name. So A, B, C, capital letter will be chosen. Group of possible outcomes. So when you have a sample space, out of that, you could choose what you are really interested in. So mm. that group of possible outcomes is event, okay? So these are subsets of sample space. These are part of your sample space, correct? Mm. N of A is the number of favorable events and the probability will normally be the possibility that that event happens. So amongst the terms which we have defined, if I say probability of A, it is the ratio of N of A to N of S, right? So favorable yeah. events to total outcome. Is this is, these are simple definitions to understand. Now, let us uh, take up some scenarios and answer questions based on what we have learned just now. Example one, can you read the question please? Mm -hmm. So determine possible outcomes of each trial and N, is it N NS, yeah, um, for each experiment. Got it. So, so, so I have written here trials, right? So, so every experiment will have number of trials. So when you have a trial, it, and these are four ex trials, which are types of experiments we are discussing, rolling a dice, tossing a coin, tossing two coins, and number order of numbers in rolling two dice, right? So these are different experiments. You need to tell me their outcomes. So can you tell me what is the outcome for rolling a die? So um, like we discussed, the only numbers you can get are from one to six. Perfect. And number of sample space elements are just six. six. That is oh, okay. tossing a coin, you could get heads or tails. So the number is two. Tossing mm -hmm. two coins, you could get the combination of heads and tails, which is four as shown here, right? Mm -hmm. And when you throw two dies, that is how the numbers could be, right? So we can write oh. them like the coordinate point as shown here. So taking one die as your first die, second as your second die. Sometimes we say a black die and a white die or different color, a big and a small die, so that we can yeah. differentiate them. So we write just like a coordinate point uh, as shown here, and these are 36 in all. So very important to understand what is the sample space and how many total outcomes are there in the sample space, as this is your denominator in most of the uh, results which we are looking for in probability, right? So that mm -hmm. is. Let's take up second 
uh, example here. Can you read this example, please? Um, example two, probability of an event. Probability of an even A is event given by... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Event A, yeah. Oh. Typing error, yeah. Um, probability of an event is given by the ratio of number of favorable outcomes to the total number of outcomes in the sample space. So probability of A equals N A over N of S, um, A being between one and zero, both being included. Okay, so always between one and zero. So we are actually now focusing on theoretical probability. So today in our video, we'll focus on theoretical probability. As okay. you're saying, N of S is the number of outcomes which we have in the sample space. N of A will be treated as favorable outcomes for our event and probability will be the ratio of these two, correct? Mm -hmm. Now here is the first uh, question to be answered. So can you read and answer this question? So um, probability of tossing a head when a fair coin is tossed. Mm. So number of like um, possible outcomes. So it's a, wait, it's a fair coin. So the likelihood of getting heads or tails is equal. So there's that's two outcomes. Yes. And then they're asking for the probability of tossing a head. So that's only one outcome, one out of two. So it's one divided by two is half. Yeah. yeah. Next, please. Yeah. Um, probability of drawing an ace from a standard deck of 52 cards. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's 52 cards, that's the possible outcomes. And ace, there are four, Got it. what's it called? Like stuff. Um, no, what, like, ace, what are the- Ace, cards, diamonds, and clubs. Yeah, what suits. do you call them? Suits. suits. Oh, suits, that's it. <laughs> that's the word I was looking for, yeah. The four suits, that means there's four aces. So four divided by 52 is one over 13. Perfect. Probability of getting um, sum of seven on rolling two dice. Very so two dice means um, six times six, so 36 outcomes. And then... Let us see how we get the sum. Let's go back to, yeah. we have drawn this, right? Sum of one seven. Six. So how do you get sum of seven? Six and one, five, two, four, three, three, four, two, five, one, six. You see that? Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> that was quick. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So oh, right. those are the six numbers which are favorable in this particular case. Perfect. So oh. that's clear, right? Yeah. Hmm. So sixth. And then B, um, probability that a randomly drawn integer between one and a hundred is a prime number. Yes. So how many prime numbers are there between one and hundred? I so, don't know. I have to sit yeah. there and count. <laughs> it can take too long. There are 24 prime numbers. Now that is where the probability becomes very intricate. Many times the answers are not very obvious and many times we have to work very hard to get those favorable answers. Correct? Right. It may look simple. Well, the prime numbers are 25 between 1 and 100, right? So similarly, when you make a list of prime numbers, uh, this is a very important question. How many are there between 1 and 50? As likewise, there could be few questions which might take a lot of time and just so you should know these numbers, okay? So, oh, so you just prime, have to memorize it. Yes, some critical numbers you should know in probability, okay? So soon we'll learn them. So there are 100, um, there are 25 prime numbers from one to 100, and therefore the probability is one fourth, 25 over 100, okay? Mm -hmm. Example three. Okay, now I'll introduce you to a very important uh, concept, and that is called complement of an event A. Mm -hmm. Well, also, uh, have you done Venn diagrams, Sammy? Yeah, I remember actually doing this. Like, a little dash at the top means, like, not included, included, and okay. N, and I'm like, ah. Yes. I know what it so, was. What's the topic? Venn diagrams is an integral part of probability. So, mm -hmm. you know, we might take up a lesson on uh, reviewing Venn diagram concepts because many examples will require Venn diagrams and tree diagrams to oh, solve okay. questions based on probability. Right? So mm -hmm. complement of an event. So coming back to the concepts of Venn diagram. So this rectangle, which I've shown here, shows your total sample space. Right? The sample right. space term was introduced to us. So we say everything in this particular rectangle is a sample space. The event is shown there as A event, right? So whatever is not in A is the complement of A as it suggests, right? So the, mm -hmm. the portion which is shown not in white is the complement of event A. 
it is now important to see that probability of A plus probability of its complement should always be how much? One, right? One. Because totally they, they have the whole right. complete sample space. Now that really helps us to answer many questions. For example, many times um, you know, we will have examples here. For example, we have a very interesting question saying, what is the probability that uh, none of the student in the class will have uh, same birthday, for example? Now, mm -hmm. answering this question is simpler. If you say, well, let one of them have the same birthday, correct? And but, then complement of that will say that none of them will have it. Do you, uh, do you see that example kind of a thing? Yeah. So complement is a very important concept uh, which we are going to use. And so it's the right time to introduce you to this particular concept, okay? So can you mm -hmm. please read what I've written here? So from the beginning? Yeah. All right. Complement of an event, A, um, or... We write not, with A bar. That is how we write. That is a sign for it. Oh, uh, okay. So that's a symbol. So with symbol A. Word, yeah. Sometimes we also put a, we put a bar here or we may put a bar on the top, right? So A bar. Complete. All right. Okay. Um, the event, so it means uh, event A does not happen. That is um, A and then A, like not A or like complement of A. Yeah, not A. Not A is correct. A okay, and not A. Correct. Um, gather includes all possible outcomes. Perfect. So the probability of A and the probability of not A equals one. Perfect. And so you can so, rearrange. Yes. Yeah. The probability of not A is one minus probability of A. Perfect. So this is looks simple, but it's very important and very useful mm -hmm. formula. Now, example three. What is the probability that a randomly drawn integer between one and 50 is not a perfect square? Do you understand what is a perfect square? Like one square, two square, three square, four square, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. these numbers are perfect square, right? One, four, nine, 16, these are perfect squares for you. Now the question is, what is the probability that a randomly drawn integer between one to 50 is not a perfect square? Mm -hmm. So here we again use the concept of complement. We know what are perfect squares between one to 50. The numbers are, one square, two square, three square, up to seven square, right? Seven squares right. be nine. So there are seven perfect squares we know clearly, correct? Mm -hmm. Out of 57 are perfect squares. So not those seven gives 43. And therefore 43 over 50 becomes the solution. You get the idea? Yeah, that makes sense. It's a very simple example, but gives you the, you know, the power of this particular right. Concept. You understand? So in the exam, they yeah. would just give you the question. They're not going to say use complement uh, no. this method. Oh, okay. So you just got to know, right? You got to know, yeah, right? Yeah. You okay. can do either way, but using complement will save a lot of time. Many yes. Times. That yeah. is what it is. So, so your you tip this? for, sorry, right. just a quick thing. A tip for this one is when you read questions like this, it's best to see what do you know and right then work from there. Don't try and work in reverse and it'll take too long. That is correct. Okay, okay. cool. So strategy. Um, since we know that there are seven perfect squares, it is easier to work with the complement event. Yes. Oh, okay. So we we'll define our event. So it's a simple question, but let's understand the process of solving questions based on probability, right? Mm -hmm. So the event A is a perfect square for us, right? So the complement of the event is not a perfect square. You define your events, right? Right. The number of favorable cases for event A, because that is what we are working on, is seven, right? Since there are seven perfect squares, which are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and 49, between 1 to 50, correct? So mm -hmm. in the sample space, 1 to 50 means 50, right? Total 50. number in sample space. So probability is the ratio of N A over N S, seven over 50. And so we get our answer as complement, right? So complement will be one minus seven over 50, correct? Yeah. Probability of not a perfect square is one minus seven over 50 and 43 over 50 is what we get. Sometimes, as I said, we also write answer in percent. You can always write this as 86%. Is that clear to you? Yeah, makes more sense. Okay. So let's move on and take Another example here. So what is this? 
So it is again an example on complement of a function. Example three, find the probability that the two numbers will be different when two dice are thrown. Do you see, read the question again. Amy, just read the question. Mm. Find the probability that the two numbers will be different when two dice are thrown. So, so not say. So you find right? the ones that are the same. <laughs> not say. Okay. So yeah. again, we know uh, when they are same. We know it's so easy to just figure mm. out when are they same. So we can define our event as when they're exactly same. So we know right. there were 36 options, right? Out of this same word, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six. We are done. Yeah. Right? <laughs> six are same. And therefore, probability of not same will be one minus one over six. And the answer is five out of six. Is that clear? Yeah. All so right. That is how we have to approach uh, and solve such questions. Clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so these were some simple questions on probability, but today we are only touching on the concepts, correct? Yeah, concepts thank you. Complement, right? Now let's talk about mutually exclusive, right? This is a very difficult concept when it really comes to test questions, but mm -hmm. not difficult otherwise. So mutually exclusive means nothing common between the two. That is what it means. So again, getting back to our Venn diagrams, that is the sample space shown to us. And the two events are those two circles, A and B, right? You see, they are not touching. They have yeah. nothing in common. So if that is the case, we say these two events are mutually exclusive. All right. For example, getting odd numbers and getting even numbers, there's nothing in common between the two, right? Mm -hmm. When you're talking about, let's say, boys and girls in the class, there's nothing in common when the question is based on just boys and girls. So those are mutually exclusive events, right? So two or more events are mutually exclusive if they cannot happen at the same time. Right? So when you throw a dice, head or tail, right? It cannot be right. correct. So there is no overlap when two or more events are occurring. These are also called disjoint functions. As shown here, there's nothing common. So they're also referred to as disjoint function. So we'll be actually... Uh, see, probability is linked with so many branches of mathematics. We will be linking with functions also. So we use those terms, right? Mm -hmm. If A and B are mutually exclusive events, then probability of either A or B occurring is, we write it like this, probability of A or B or the symbol union, U, which we have used in functions and in Venn diagrams will be written as probability of A plus probability of B. Good. So U means or. Or, yes, you're right. Oh, correct. So as we had in previous example, when a die is thrown, number three or five. So probability of three was added to probability of five. It became two out of six as our answer. So that is what we mean. Mutually exclusive. Nothing in common. And this is called our first rule. This is called the addition rule. So sometimes we refer this to our addition for mutually exclusive. Okay. So whenever there is or, we are adding their probability. And if it is mutually exclusive, they just add as it is, right? Okay. Now we'll take up two examples to understand it. A die is rolled once. What is the probability of rolling three or a five, right? Obviously, they are mutually exclusive events. You can get either three or five. You cannot get both at the same time. And rolling a die means there are only six outcomes in the sample space. So one out of six plus one out of six gives two out of six re reduced to one out of three as our solution to this particular case. Mm -hmm. yeah. Part B. What is the probability of rolling a six and flipping a red card from a standard deck of 52? Well, these are two different events. They are mutually exclusive. You're rolling one thing. You may get a six, may not get a six. On the other side, you're drawing a card from a deck of 52 cards. Again, they're mutually exclusive events. And therefore, when we say, what is the probability of rolling a six and flipping a red card, right? So the word and is used. However, these are mutually exclusive events. You get my point? Oh, so yeah. don't get confused yeah. with such um, purposely placed words which may put you off track, correct? Mm -hmm. But they are mutually exclusive terms, right? 
So we, this has to be treated as an or function. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes. That's like a key thing. Because <laughs> yeah. don't like look for words. Like if I see or, know what to do. If I see yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Know what to do. that's not how it is. You have yes. to actually read the question and understand it. Okay. So probability of rolling a six is one out of six, and that of red card is 26 out of, there are half of them are red cards, right? So yeah. you add them up and get your result as two out of three, correct? So the probability of rolling a six, um, let me make it or, it will be confusing. Okay, or. Let's make it or, so uh, we'll correct it. We'll make it or only, let's be very clear. Uh, the probability of uh, rolling a six or flipping a red card from a standard deck of 52 should be, we'll add them up, right? Let's, we're beginning with it. So let's keep it very simple. So we'll actually talk about and and or in a greater details later, clear? Okay. Let's take example five, which is mutually not exclusive events, right? So that means clearly there's something in common between the two events, right? So that is something which we call intersection and is represented with the, sorry, this is typing error again and Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, this is okay. This is okay. <clears throat> Mutually, uh, not exclusive events, but we are still talking about or condition in this case. So we'll continue. So two or more events are not mutually exclusive if they have something in common, as shown here, right? Yeah. There is an overlap when two or more events are occurring, as shown in the event diagram. If event A and B are not mutually exclusive events, then probability of either A or B occurring is written same way as we talked about A or B, A union B, correct? How? Mm -hmm. When we add probabilities of A and B, you will notice that the center common portion has been added twice. You see that? Right. Yeah. So while adding for A, we added that center portion and also with B. So therefore, we have to subtract this out. Do you see that? Yeah, oh, okay. And therefore, this becomes a general form, which works for any event which could be mutually exclusive or not exclusive. So, does this method only work if they're asking for um, A or B? A or B, yeah. So, we are talking about probability of A or B. Now, whenever we're talking about probability of A or B, we know that their probabilities should be added. However, if they are not exclusive events, they are not mutually exclusive, there's something in common. That something in common has been added twice and therefore it should be subtracted. So that right. becomes our general formula, which could be also used for exclusive events because in that case, this intersection will be zero. So if it is a mutually exclusive event, it means it has nothing. Nothing common. Yeah. In that yes. case, A intersection B probability will be zero, right? So you're not taking away yeah. anything and it is the same formula. You get the idea. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I get what you're saying, yeah. So you're saying you can use the same formula for mutually exclusive, but the A and B would just be zero because there's no intersection. Yes. Intersection will be zero. Got it, yeah. So, so this formula, which we use for mutually not exclusive events, can be treated as a general formula, right? Oh, okay. And we can use both ways. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you please read example number five? So a provisional park has been, oh, so it has 120 campsites. A total of 40 campsites have electricity. Of the 25 sites on the lake shore, 10 have electricity. If a campsite is selected at random, what is the probability that they will either have electricity or be on the lake shore? Good. Whoa, a lot of work. A lot okay. of work. So, so this is how we are getting into uh, probability yeah. questions. They become very tricky. Mm -hmm. Now we are given a probability, um, 120 is the total number we're given, right? So when we right. read this question, provincial range has 120 campsites, we know about it. A total of 40 campsites have electricity. Right? So we define our events with electricity, not electricity. So we know those uh, terms in our mind. Right? 
So 40 campsites have electricity of the 25 camps, camps so there are 25 campsites on the lake show, mm -hmm. then have electricity. You, you get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, if campsite is selected at random, what is the probability that it will either have electricity or be on the lake shore? So we're looking for lake shore electricity intersection. Do you see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because there is something which is common. Lake shore uh, campsites may also have electricity. So that is what we are focusing on. Do you understand? Okay. So we know total campsites having electricity, total campsites near the lake shore. And if we take away those which are common, then we can answer our question that the probability of uh, campsites with electricity or on the lake shore. You can mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct? So, yeah. so you can actually uh, see how we can use this particular concept in answering such questions. Mm, yeah. Okay. I just think uh, when I see like big questions like this, I think I need to do what you said and like state um, the like to outcomes 120, uh, campsite 40, not campsite like that. And then what the question is asking for, I'll choose the required value. Yeah, yeah, so, so 120 is the total which comes in the denominator, which is our sample mm -hmm. space. Right? And the campsites, they could be treated as A and B events. And wow. writing 10 in the center will help you write all the numbers otherwise. You get my point. And then you'll get your answer. So we'll look into this also as we move along. Is it clear? So um, yeah. Just a quick thing. In this one, the two events are um, have electricity or lake shore. Yes, yes. Oh, so the two events are electricity yeah. and lake shore. So we say, let's say this is A is our electricity, let us say, and B yeah. is the lake shore, correct? So what we have noticed here is that the center number is known to us as 10. Correct? Oh, now yeah, in yeah. the lake shore, there are 25 sites on the lake shore. So this is 15. Do you see that? Yeah. 15 are the ones which are without electricity, but on the lake shore. Mm -hmm. Now, it says a total of 40 campsites have electricity means 30 here. 40 take, 20, yeah, 40 take 15. Yeah. 10, which are 25. Common. Oh. 10 were common. So 40 campsites. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You got my idea. So you yeah, make yeah. a Venn diagram like this very clearly. And now the question is the electricity or lake share. So you can actually add these terms, right? So what do you get? 30 plus 10 plus 15, which is 55. You get your answer. Oh, yeah. I like that. I think I'll put in a Venn diagram. Yes. It helps me, yeah. Venn and then you just write on the outside of that. Obviously, okay. would be okay. eighty. Yeah. So when it becomes really complicated, Venn mm -hmm. diagrams are very helpful, right? Yeah. Because still we have not used many conditions like not this and not and not. Right. There are so many other conditions which can make it very very complicated. Mm -hmm. Then the Venn diagram. But otherwise, from this particular question also, you could have answered as shown here. That's, that's yeah. what I'm trying to say, right? That makes sense though, for that one, yeah. For this question, right? You need yeah. not go to Venn diagrams. What I'm trying to yeah. say is definitely Venn diagram is a very good way of solving this, but for this, we may not go there. You, you understand, mm -hmm. right? We can just straight away. Yeah, as it hasn't got all that not business going on. Yeah, yeah. not that straightforward. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> get used to even solving uh, at this level, right? Right. Get used okay. to solving at this level, what I'm trying to say, because uh, there will be very, very complicated cases when we get into this, mm -hmm. when then we will use Venn diagram, okay? Okay, yeah. But it's no harm, no harm, right? For this particular mm -hmm. case, you see it was so simple, correct? Yeah. But trying to get a difficult concept is also a part of exercise. That is what I'm trying to say, okay? Now, so we have learned or condition, correct? Mm -hmm. Here is another question for you and seems it is also based on or conditions. Can you please read this question? Okay. So inclusion and exclusion. The probability that a student likes maths is 0.7 and the probability that the student likes English is 0.2. If only one in 10 students 
likes both maths and English, what is the probability that a student chosen at random does not like maths or English? Correct. Mm. So, if A and O. Oh. Correct. So, when you read the question, it is quite complicated, correct? So, right. it started becoming complicated, right? All right. Mm. Uh, so, it is good to now define your events, right? So, you okay. define the event A, what is event A, what is event B, and then they are clearly saying something in common also, intersection, correct? And the mm -hmm. question is, uh, what is the probability that a student chosen at random does not like math or English, right? So we know mm -hmm. does not like math or English, and there is something common, right? One out of 10 is common, correct? Yeah. So if one out of 10 students like both, so that means we know the intersection, which is one out of 10. Right. So the probability of the in intersection part is one out of 10. The other two are given to us. You get the idea. Oh, okay. You just sub it in. The other equation. two are given to us, right? So right. in a way we can use this particular formula to answer uh, the question, correct? Now let's get into this question. Uh, can you please read it again? So from the beginning. Yeah. Right. The probability that a student likes maths is 0 0.7. Correct. And the probability that a student likes English is 0 0.2. Correct. If only one in 10 students like both maths and English, what is the probability that a student chosen at random does not like maths or English? Does not like. Mm -hmm. So the question has, is not, what is the what is the probability that a student chosen at random does not like math or English? You get the idea. Does not like math or English. It's a more complicated question than what we had previously. You get my point. It is not, not you, you understand. So when we qualified with does not like, but we are given the probabilities with like, does not mean is complement. Does if we were doing that on a Venn diagram, that yes. value that we're looking for will be outside, outside. of the circles. Okay. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. so therefore, we have now defined our event of mathematics liking is 0 0.7, mm -hmm. English liking is 0 0.2, and their intersection is 1 out of 10. This information is given to us. Is that clear to you? Yeah. What we are trying to find is does not like math means M complement or mm -hmm. does not like English, English E complement. You understand? Yeah. But we use the same formula. After all, it you could have defined A and B, right? M complement, A complement, A and B. And then you could write that should be probability of not liking math, probability of not liking English, take away probability of not liking both. Uh, I Correct? see. Yeah. Right? So because it was does not like, do you understand? Does not like. Yeah. So now does not like means 1 minus 0 0.7. 1 minus 0 0.2 and 1 minus 0 0.1. Those are the complements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we get our numbers to multiply and get the answer. You see that? That makes sense, yeah. Now, solving like this is simpler than making a Venn diagram for this question. Let me tell you that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I was going to ask that. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yeah. In the Venn diagram, does not like A will be this outside, correct? Does not like B will be that outside. You understand? It is very complex. Oh, right. Nice. Yeah, this one, this one makes a lot of sense, the way you've done it. Correct. Yeah. The way it has been done. So, therefore, we, we are touching upon different ways and strategies to solve the questions today. So, that once we, our mind is open to the whole mm -hmm. scenario, like how should we tackle, correct? Then we will jump into probability questions and tackle them one by one. You get my point? Okay, so, yes. And, you know, yes. even if I just tell you one method and then we do 10 questions based on that method, it makes no sense because, you know, every question is based on that method. You stop, right. thinking, you stop thinking and writing answers. That is so true. <laughs> so, so we'll have a mixed up exercise. So we'll have a mixed up review, of, overview of everything. And then mm -hmm. a question thrown to you at random, which is probability, right? Oh, and then I'll have to pick and choose which method I have to apply. Then you have to apply the strategy. Oh. That is the whole idea of, you know. That makes it harder though. <laughs> it is very hard, yeah. But it is simpler than 
uh, getting those questions in examination. You get my point? Right. Yeah. <laughs> They're not saying from section 10.2, this is the question, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I would know yes. from 10.2. Yeah. So, or event, I think you have understood. Mm -hmm. Whenever we say event A or B, not A or B, so those kinds of conditions we have seen, we have also seen it could be taken as mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive. However, we could very easily use this particular formula, which is probability of A plus probability of B, take away probability of intersection of A and B, correct? Mm -hmm. That works with our condition always. Now, let's talk about dependent versus independent events, right? Uh, to give you a broad view of dependent and independent, it is something like this. Let's say we had an example of drawing an ace from a deck of cards, correct? What is the probability of drawing ace and then another ace? You get my point, right? Drawing mm -hmm. two aces, yeah. one, by one after the other. So that becomes a dependent event. Since once I draw an ace and I do not replace it, then the deck now has 51 cards, not 52. So the probability of drawing the second ace has changed. The scenario has changed. One ace has been already drawn. The number of cards has become 51. And now the probability of drawing the second ace is 3 out of 51. It is no more 4 out of 52. Oh. So our event, which is in a sequence followed by another event, has changed the probability of the other event. So they are dependent events. You get the idea. Okay, yeah. On the other hand, yeah. mm -hmm. on the other hand, if I have a question, throw the dice, right? One time, second time, third time. Let's say, let's the question is here. Uh, well, let's take the question itself. A, Amy, can you read the question number A? So a fair die is rolled six times without getting a six. Mm. What is the probability that the seventh roll will give six? Well, is it a so, dependent event or independent event? So I'm saying independent because Correct. you said dependent is when I throw it, it's like if I keep throwing it, nothing's being taken away. So yeah. it's, it's the same chance that's always happening. It doesn't matter whether I throw it 100 times, I'll still, it will always be an independent event. Yeah. You cannot okay. say last six times it didn't come, so this time it will come. No? Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> it is Nothing got taken away or moved. Right. Correct. But. That is what independent event is. So previous events have not changed its probability. Its probability is still one out of six. Mm -hmm. You yeah. get the idea. Correct? Read part B. So two cards are drawn in succession without replacement from a deck of 52 cards. The first card is black. What is the probability of drawing a red in the second draw? Correct. Okay. So clearly it says without replacement, meaning yes. the total, like out of the 52, now there's only um, 50. Two cards are taken. So 50 cards are left. So, so two um, cards are drawn in succession means one after the other. So one right. card has been drawn, 51 cards left. Now the second is being drawn. Correct. So mm -hmm. the second card, when it is drawn, there are 51 cards, okay? So one after the other, in a quick succession. Is that clear to you? <clears throat> oh, so you take one, and that will be 51 cards. Yes. Then so you the take another. Of, yeah, probability of the other card will be, see, now, two cards are drawn in succession without replacement from the deck of 52 cards. The mm -hmm. first card is black. It is known that the first card is black, right? Mm -hmm. So we know that it has been taken out, and we are left with 51 cards. What is the probability of drawing a red card? Red cards are still 26, correct? Because the red card wasn't drawn. So the probability of drawing a red card is 26 over 51. It is not 26 over 52. All right. Normally, yeah. probability of drawing a red card will be 26 over 52. Half, mm -hmm. 50%. But now it's higher, correct? Because yeah. 51. That is what we mean by dependent and independent events. Is that clear now? So is there a way to kind of like, um, what's it called, uh, write it uh, in, I kind of wrote like when an event affects the chance of getting the other event, but that doesn't really right. make sense. As you a can read this. I think this will help you. Read this. Okay. Two or more events, A and B, are independent if only 
oh, if and only if the occurrence mm -hmm. of A does not affect the probability of the occurrence of B. Oh, okay. That's the way to write it. Yeah. And then drawing items without replacement is a common example of dependent events. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's like, really nicely worded. Yeah, okay. Yeah, if and only if is the clause. Got it. Let's take some more examples. Example seven. If two events A and B are independent events, this is important to understand, they're independent events, then the probability that both A and B happen is probability of A and B. Do you see now I'm using both A and B? Yeah. And means intersection, correct? A and B. In that case, their probabilities get multiplied. That is to say, what is the probability of getting six and then again six in the second trial? Okay. In the first trial, it is one out of six and again getting six, again one out of six. So total probabilities, multiply them. One so it is out one out of 36, very mm -hmm. rare. Do you understand? Yeah. So that is what it means. If the events are independent, then their probabilities get multiplied as shown here. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's an example. Can you please read the example and then we'll try to do it. Right. So Tom travels uh, the same route to school every day. He has determined that there is a 0.7 probability that he will wait for at least one red light. And that there is a 0.4 probability that he will meet his friend Sam on his way to school. Okay. Are they dependent okay. or independent? Oh, okay, wait. Um, so he's determined that it's, he will wait for at least one red light. Um, independent. Correct. Okay. So both are independent events. And what are we asking for? So it's very important to identify whether these are independent or dependent, right? Oh, okay. So, yeah. so so it says he has determined this is his probability that he will meet his friend Sam on his way to the school. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, here are two questions based on it. So can you please read the first question? A, what is the probability that Tom will not have to wait at a red light and will see his friend Sam? Yes, will not have to wait and will see. So basically, yeah. we have to find the probability of not waiting probability of seeing, just multiply them, get the result. You get the mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. So this nomenclature really helps. So we are saying, we are first defining the events. We say probability, the event W is waiting, S is seeing the friend, right, Sam? So not waiting, it said, right? So since you say not, so prime, W prime. Intersection, Sam. We are seeing Sam, right? Is that clear? Yeah. So in that yes. case, not waiting, times the probability of seeing the, if they are given 0.7, we'll do one minus 0.7 because not, right, complement. Yeah. And probability yeah, of yeah. seeing is 0 0.4. Just multiply them and get your answer. You get the idea. Mm -hmm. So you have to dissect these elements clearly, right? Not uh -huh. complement. And then independent means you have to multiply them. So when you start thinking in this fashion, it becomes simpler, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Try to do part B. What is the probability that Tom will have to wait at a red light and will not see his fam fam friend, friend, friend Sam, his friend Sam? Clear. Yeah. As soon okay. as you get into wait, okay, W, and not see S prime. Done. Mm. No, not thinking much. Right. Both and, and means intersection. And these are independent, multiply them. You get the idea. And yeah. here, we know all the values, just multiply and get your answer. Is that Makes sense? Yeah. Now the key here is in probability questions, never think twice. You, more you think, more confused you get. Yeah. As you read the question, <laughs> define A, B, C, whatever it is, right? Simple <laughs> event names. And put those numbers like prime as I'm putting, right? I'm not thinking what has gone. I'm just key words, right? Yeah. So, so you say, wait, okay, wait, W, right? Not Sam, okay, slash. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Sam not. prime. Yeah, S prime. <laughs> right. Slash. <laughs> Intersection. <laughs> Intersection. And there you go. I mean, yeah. you don't think it too. More you think, more puzzled you get, and you'll definitely get a wrong answer. That is so true because I actually remember in GCSE when 
had questions like you take a marble you replace it you don't and i try and think logically like no. if i put it in and i take it out and then it gets so confusing i'm like i just took it out and i put it in like yeah i get what you're saying so yeah, don't going back to the same point yeah ultimately you have to start with a fresh mind so if you get okay. confused just skip that question go forward and then come back with fresh mind then do it but okay. do it in one, in one shot till you just thinking is clear to you unless and until this thinking is clear to you oh. don't write down your answer that is what okay. i'm trying to tell you right so yeah. when you read the question you have to process is it an independent event they're asking for and right mm -hmm. if they're asking for or mutually exclusive or not simple question okay yeah like this sort of thing that's what we are getting into okay example 8 Now, in example eight, I have given you some probabilities, and we have to work with these equations which we worked with. Many times there will be a question where these kinds of questions will be seen. Let A and B be independent events. We are saying they are independent events. You don't have to think about it. The probability of A is one out of four. Probability of A union B is two out of three. Union or you understand? Find yeah. probability of B. How will you do? Okay, so we know they're independent, so that's one question answered. Mm -hmm. And since we see it as union, we know it's or. So that means you have, to, you have to find the probability of B. Yes, yes, or yes. yes. We know this is or. Correct. Continue. Okay. Mm -hmm. So using the formula, which is because um, we know it's or, we we do that yeah. addition thing. So probability yeah. of A add probability of Oh, it's there. And probability of B minus probability of the intersection of A and B. Correct. And so we know what A is. So you just sub that in, which is yes. a quarter. Um, or we can rearrange it. We know we know these two things, correct? Oh no, yeah, we know those two things. Yeah, um, we have to find this. How will you do it? Um, but we, wait, how do we find out the intersection? Yes. No. Oh. See now. Since we are given it's an independent event, we could write yeah. for intersection. It is probability of A times probability of B. Correct. Oh. So we replace that intersection with A times B, and it becomes an algebraic equation. Do you see that part? Yeah. It's a quarter <laughs> times probability of B. Oh, okay. Correct. The only okay. unknown here is probability of B in this particular equation. You get the idea? We know the probability of A, right? these two are known to us probability of b is not known to us correct right so we can actually now we know the probability of a union b so it now c you get the idea right so we replaced um, we replaced a intersection b with the product of probabilities of a and b how did you get that one again sorry why is it being multiplied uh, we'll start from the beginning <clears throat> now read from note the events are independent and therefore the probability of a and b equals the probability of a and the probability of b substitute this value here how did you get that though as probability of a times probability of b because an independent event oh just now we did oh yeah It yeah is an independent is event so probability of a and b will get multiplied by Multiply. the intersection yeah yeah and then dependent they don't get multiplied no no dependent we are not talking about now right okay. so we'll okay. get into that okay yes okay so we haven't done that yet cool no, okay no. all right yeah so you sub it in and yes. you get like a little formula thing yeah all right now we have only probability of a and b with work with we already know probability of a union b substitute those values in your equation isolate probability of b and find it out you get the idea mm -hmm. right so oh, now okay. yes so i like you to read this portion so in independent events the outcome of one does not affect the outcome of the other hmm. thus the probability of both happen is the product of their probabilities hmm. this is true even if the events are not mutually exclusive Sorry. Oh, that's the question I just asked. Okay, the answer was there. Yeah, that makes sense. sense so yeah. that is how we are going to answer such questions. So in your test, there is a mix of uh, questions which you will find, and actually we have dealt with that mix. Now, right. answering your question, dependent, right? So 
dependent and conditional probability. So whenever the events are dependent, then there are some conditions involved, right? How they will affect one another. That is what is important. So two or more events that occur in a sequence are dependent if the outcome of any event changes the possible outcome of the other events. Clear? So two or more events that occur in a sequence are dependent if the outcome of any event changes the possible outcome of other events. Yes. Only then they are dependent. Correct. Right. Now, here, if B is dependent on A, let us say B is dependent on A, then yeah. conditional probability of B when A has occurred, right? A has occurred, B has changed. Conditional probability of B when A has occurred is first thing written like this. So when I write probability of B, that that bar here, when A has yeah. occurred, you have to read like this. Probability, this is to be read as probability of B when A has occurred, correct? A has already uh -huh. happened. We are trying to find probability of B. That is what we are trying to find. A is basically probability of A intersection B divided by probability of A. That is the formula. You will understand the formula also. So the probability of, let's say these are the two events, correct? So we are basically saying, uh, we'll take better example than Venn diagram in this particular case. I'll take examples and then explain you. So the probability of B when A has occurred is probability of A and B divided by probability of A. Okay? Okay. Yeah. This can be rearranged. This you can just cross multiply. So probability of A and B is probability of A times probability of B when A has occurred. Right. Mm -hmm. You see, therefore, conditional probability, I mean, where the dependent case, the formula is slightly different. We do not have probability of A times probability of B now. Mm -hmm. In independent, it was product of probability of A and probability of B. When they are dependent, then it is probability of B when A has occurred. Do you see that? Because one has affected the other. Yeah. Because one has affected the other. Its probability changed. Mm -hmm. Got the idea. That so makes this sense. This is a yeah. modified formula, correct? So this could be general formula also. Mm -hmm. That is the case. If it is independent event, then the probability of B when A has occurred will remain probability of B, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so it, this formula also works otherwise also. So when you say probability of B, when A has occurred is equal to probability of B, it means what? It means independent event. Because the probability did not change, correct? Right, yeah. So if the probability does not change, it is the same probability, it is independent event, then the formula for independent event also works, right? Probability of A times probability of B. Right. Mm -hmm. But if it is changed, then you have to multiply by the changed probability. It makes yes. sense. So that is your product rule. Okay. So product rule is can be applied with both probability dependent and independent, where probability of B will be, if it is affected, you have to write the affected probability. If yes. it is not, then the not one. Correct. So mm -hmm. that is in short uh, about concept for dependent. Now here is example nine. How do we determine? If two events are independent algebraically, tell me. We have answered this question. So. Okay. Oh, is it above? Is, oh. Simple. If the probability of B is same, that is, it is not affected, then the events are independent events, correct? Yeah. That is okay. right. So the independent events is when their product is probability of A times pro pro probability of B, correct? <clears throat> as far as the above formula is concerned, we are saying A intersection B. So A intersection B means what? For independent event it is their product, right? A times, yeah, probability of A times probability of B. It cancels your left probability of B. Do you see that? So the oh. same formula works, correct? <laughs> yeah. So probability of B, when A has occurred, if it is not changed, it is same. It is probability of B only, makes sense. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. is how we have to correlate all these relations which we have learned today. Correct? Mm. We'll only close this with some examples so that you know you understand the conditional probability. Can you please read example number 10? Yeah. So two dice are rolled together. 
Determine the probability that exactly one die shows a five, given that the sum is seven. seven. So now what we have done here is, two dice are rolled, determine the probability that exactly one die shows a five, given that the sum is seven. So when you have these conditional probability things, this is more of a conditional probability, right? Mm. In that case, we our sample space has now been reduced to the sum of seven. Do you see that? We are saying, determine the probability that exactly one die shows a five, given that the sum is seven. We know that two dice were rolled and the sum is seven. You get the mm -hmm. idea? Yeah. So those are the combinations. Let's get back to the main figure. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> Uh, this combination was a good figure. I'll just share with you this combination. Yeah, sum is seven. So how do you get sum of seven? Um, two and five, five and two. Yeah, six, one. Six and one. Three and four. Sum is seven, right? Oh. So the question is, yeah. what is the probability of getting one of them as five? That is the question now. Do you understand? One of them is five here, one of them is five here. So it is two out of two one, out two, of three, four, five, six. Done. Two out of six, a yeah. third. Oh, yeah. that was quick. <laughs> it's that because of that layout that you've uh, drawn there. It makes dice like kind of reading really easy. If yeah. I was in an exam, I would have to write out all of this and it would take. Yeah, you have to write out. You have yeah. to have written. So now understand this conditional probability. When we talk about conditional probability, we are also saying that a sample space has been changed, correct? We are saying when the sum is seven, right? Nothing else. We know yeah. that the two dice have been thrown, the sum is seven. So we do not have to look into anything else but only to this particular sample space. Oh, now, the sum says, yeah, I thought you said, for some reason, I was thinking you said, um, like, the total outcome has changed. And I'm like, but it yeah. hasn't. It's a sample space that has. For this particular event, yeah. when we are saying the first, first thing we know about it is that the sum is seven. So just right. ignore everything else. Mm -hmm. we, they, these are only four, seven, six chances, possibilities, combinations. Yeah. Now the question is, how many do we see fives here? Well, there are only two out of these six, right? Right. That is our answer. Done. So most of the time, what I'm trying to show, share with you at this moment is that the conditional probability questions can be very difficult. However, if you think about the new sample space and then work yeah. on it, then it is very simple. You don't have to apply any formula. You get my um, point? Yeah. So I have solved this question in two different ways, just to show that this could be done like this. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> we are saying event A, we have two events, we just define them. Event A is die shows of A. <clears throat> okay, so, so we are doing it, uh, let's go, you will not get it from this particular space. We are saying determine the probability that exactly one die shows a five. Okay, so let's go to this. So let me just go the long way. So where do we have one five? One five. Do you see one five? Yeah. So those are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten numbers. That is a sample space which we are looking one pro we are uh, we have defined one event which is one five. Is that okay? Yeah. N A. We are saying this is our N A. So there are only 10 possibilities of one five. Is that clear? Yeah. That is one. And we saw sum of seven, we saw that diagonal, the other diagonal. Is that clear to you? Yeah. And only two out of that six was correct. correct. So um, let's including very, that five very, add to seven. very interesting question. So we are saying. Event A, because that is one of the events, die shows a five. So these are the 10 options, correct? As we yeah. showed. So number of options for five is 10. Event B is that the sum is seven. Correct? That is the second event. Event B is sum yeah. is seven. For B, we got these six options. N of B is six, correct? Right? Yeah. Total number of events in this case, two dice are thrown is 36. So what is the probability of A 
because we are interested in finding what is the probability of phi, which is A for us, correct? When B has occurred, that means given that the sum is seven, B has occurred, correct? Yeah. So probability of A when B has occurred is probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. Now probability of B is six out of 36. Because getting six out of 30, probability of B getting sum of seven. So what is the probability I of I thought that was two out of six. No, two out of six was our final answer doing the other way, but this is the long way. Oh, just sum of seven. Using oh, the, without, without all that five business, just sum of seven yeah, would be yeah, six yeah. out of 36. Oh, uh, okay. This is our standard way of doing it. Let me write like this. That is the standard method. So let's go back to our standard method once again. The question is, can you please read the question? Two dice are rolled together. Determine the probability that exactly one die shows a five, given that the sum is seven. So there are two things which we are interested in. Event A, die shows a five, correct? Mm -hmm. Event B, sum is seven. You get the idea. There are two yep. events. Now, we are given that this is seven. So the conditional probability is probability of A, which is getting a five, when B has occurred. The sum is seven. You get the idea. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the formula is probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. Exactly. Now, what is the probability of A intersection B? We have to still figure out. We are finding the probability of A and B, but in our favorable for A intersection, that is probability of A, sample space and A. But mm -hmm. what is the probability of A intersection B? A intersection B, what is the number for A intersection B? Tell me. What is the number when it, you get five and the sum is seven? There are only two ways. Oh, two out of six. So what we are saying, what is the intersection of five and mm -hmm. intersection of seven, getting a sum of seven. So this is the sum of seven out of yeah. which five is only two places. Yeah. Out of the whole 36 sample space. So when we say probability of, when we say probability of, let me highlight, A intersection B means probability of five and seven mm -hmm. from seven, right? So there yeah. are only two out of 36. The total choices are 36. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah. their ratio, probability of B over this, gives me the answer one over three. This is the standard method. Okay. Right, yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. What I actually started off with was alternate method. That's the only one that was stuck in my head. <laughs> that is why you're confused. Yeah. Yeah. What that I one made of is solid sense. Method. Yeah. So the alternate method is you are given the condition, correct? Your mm -hmm. condition is that the sum is seven. Mark that sum is seven. So now yeah. our thinking is the sample space has been changed because it's a conditional probability. The right. sample space now for us is the sum is seven. These six numbers, you understand? Yeah. Now the question is, what is the probability of getting one of them as five out of these six? Well, there are only two. Only two. So it is two out of six. Yeah. One out that just makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. We are going to solve this question in this fashion, not the way we I wrote. Oh, it's the way you wrote like book, what we do in class and in books. Yeah. Oh my it's God, it's so confusing. Method. That is what I'm trying to tell you. Standard method is not good. I just, no, I get it, but it's not <laughs> the best way, I have to say. Like the way you did it was just so straight to the point, made sense, and I got it. Yeah. yeah. So you have to take your decision. Many times standard method doesn't work. Here is another example which will help you understand what I'm trying to say. And this is the last example for the day. Okay. okay. Can you please read the question? So a die is rolled twice. Correct. Find the probability that the sum of the two rolls is greater than 10. 
given that a one of the two rolls is a six yeah and b the first roll is a six correct so okay. these two are different conditions they actually are very different conditions they'll give a different okay. result but let's understand a die is rolled twice find the probability that some of the two rolls is greater than 10 that means it could be either 11 or 12 is it all right. some is greater than 10 now one of the two rolls is a six so any one of them could be a six so what i'm showing here in my table here so mm -hmm. i mean this table shows the numbers for one die one to six the other die one to six correct and when you roll them it is combination of these numbers correct yeah but, and the operation here is add because you have to see when the greater the sum sum is add correct so you're adding these numbers and so the numbers written in the center highlighted in yellow and green color are the sum of two dice numbers right one one will give you two right two and two will give you four likewise correct out of which we have highlighted the numbers which are greater than 10 so they are only 11 or 12 correct one the circle so it says find the probability that the sum of two rolls is greater than 10 so our interest is in these three numbers which are greater than 10 11 11 and 2 are the sums yeah which are greater than 10 correct yeah so we know our result now mm -hmm. sample space we are looking into the condition as a sample space one of the two roles is six any one of them could be six correct that is what they are trying to say one of the two roles is six means yeah. so either this is six or that is six any one of them mm -hmm. so now we see we have three favorable chances out of how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So three out of eleven is our answer. Without um, getting into any formula, you get the idea. Yeah. The mm -hmm. second case, the first roll is six. So we have only the first roll is six. Here it is. And the favorable chances out of these are only two. So two out of six is my answer. One out of three. Uh, you get that part. Yeah. It really helps when you draw that grid or that layout. So do you think I should spend that extra time drawing it out? Because then I, how, how am I going to answer the questions then? So it's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. Especially when you practice questions, you will be doing it many times. So it, is, it comes in a minute. So quick. It doesn't mm -hmm. take because uh, you're only interested in this part, correct? In this particular right. question, right? So I wouldn't be writing out the But answer. it is worth doing this rather than all this you get my point yes yes oh my god yeah okay so here is how you'll be doing it in your book you'll find solution of this question in alternate method so i need not discuss that okay good <laughs> you don't want that right. you get the idea right yeah that is how conditional probability questions should be answered most of the time 90 percent oh, you will okay. be successful right yeah uh, and of course there will be many times when you have to use the formula especially when i tell you that probability of a is 0. 0.7 probability of b is 0. 0.2 you cannot help it right yeah, yeah. you have to use the formula and get the answer but otherwise do not use that's mm. my yeah, but those were straightforward though because it's kind of given in the example and all you need to do is sell but exactly. the other standard one was like whoa that's crazy <laughs> so how do you find today's lesson emmy I actually have to say, considering probability is like the worst topic in maths that I thought before, it wasn't that bad. Like, obviously, a few bits were a bit iffy. That's because I'm introduced to some new key terms and I still get my head around what they mean. But um, yeah, it was actually really good. So um, I learned, obviously, I think w what we did today mainly was theoretical probability that you said, yes, yes. which is more like mathematical based, yes. whereas the empirical one is more experiment. And then the subjective is like guessing work and things. Um, so I just learned those key terms. Then obviously throughout, I think I need to... Um, myself a bit more familiar with the words like event outcome sample space um chance likelihood like these kind of key terms because they come up a lot in probability so um knowing what they mean is kind of crucial um then we learned about the or so union and then the two formulas for that um and knowing that mutually exclusive means uh there this, is this joke. nothing 
and there's nothing in common yeah. so it's like yeah. two individual things yeah. and then so not mutually exclusive means there's an intersection between the two um and then w with that last question before, conditional no, probability, yeah. yeah with um the conditional one yeah so that one when it's a conditional probability it's like kind of in the name so they give certain conditions that you have to kind of apply to the probability so let's say like we did with that one before the last one um i liked your method of saying so they've clearly stated i think what you need to do is when you read it if you're like me and have problems with kind of understanding like really big paragraphs of words kind of um like you said sir dissect it into different elements yes. so clearly state what event a is clearly state where event b is and then if it says not involved or involved you put that prime dash and then yes. literally first state exactly what it says don't try and over complicate and stuff literally put the words in the statement into um like we did here yeah yes. put into yes. um these kind of symbols and things because it's so much easier and when you see that not dash you know doing one subtract that probability because we're not including Whereas if you include, that should be given in the question. So you just, it's really simple if you kind of dissect the question. If you try and do it just by inspection and looking, there is no way that you're gonna um, get around it. And then with the dice questions, especially um, like we just saw with the standard um, solution, it makes sense, but like, I think for me personally, I'm going to use um, your alternative method because I feel like, um, like you said, even if I take it just a, a bit longer, just quickly sketching out that grid um, of all those coordinate points or, or that grid as well, um, it's definitely worth it because I can easily find and it's logical for me um, to understand. Whereas the other method, um, it's not so, but like, it depends on you as an individual. So, yeah. Perfect. So yeah. that's beautifully summarized, Amy, and you'll notice that actually in today's lesson, we covered all the topics which you'll be going through in probability. And really? I think this, yes, because this is all oh. the terms. So you can now go through these terms again. What yeah. oh. So can you just read the whole list? All right. So definitions, probability of an event, um, mm. complement of an event, Mutually exclusive or disjoint, addition rule, Great. inclusion and exclusion, independent versus dependent, multiplication rule, dependent event and conditional probability, yes. and then the exam practice. Yeah. So, and the questions which I have taken, they are actually from previous test papers, so that gives you a good idea oh. of what is expected. But these mm -hmm. are basic terms which you need to understand to begin with probability, right? Yeah. So in our next lesson, we'll take up many questions and take probability in the game of cards and in many of the scenarios, which will make things very interesting. All right. right. Look into probability with combinations and permutations later, okay? Okay, so, cool. but I hope this gives you a good idea about all. Yeah, it really does. Thank you so much. I was actually kind of dreading today's lesson because <laughs> obviously, like I said, it's not my strong topic and I don't enjoy it, but I really enjoyed it. Like I, like I understood it because I think how you started with the basics and then uh, developed it from there, it made it really clear. So thank you so much. Yeah. My pleasure. Okay. Try some questions from your book and see how yes. comfortable you feel now. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks. Have a see great you. day. Yeah, you too. See you tomorrow. Okay, see Bye. You.